Hey guys, what's going on? Today I am showing you how to install this beautiful carpet runner, how to measure it, everything that goes through in a day. This is a right turning staircase runner and it starts right now. All right, let's figure out how much carpet we need. One, two, three straight, and then the first pie, but that is also considered a straight stair, right? Because it'll end on an angle, right? So you get the one, two, three, plus that first angle stair, and you get the two pies, and you get one, two, three, four, five, six straight up to the riser. We're not doing the landing, that's why that squiggle marks out. And then 2.5 at the top. They're all going to be 30 inch stairs. Each stair is approximately 18 inches. That's the standard for any stair. Now, this is a new house, so these stairs could be bigger. So we'll allow for 20 inches each. And we have one, two, three plus the pie. So that's 60 inches. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six point five with the riser. Six point five times twenty inches. Six point five times twenty divided by twelve equals ten point eight four feet. Ten point eight four feet. Sixty inches plus the pie. Forty, sixty, eighty. 90 inches for the pie. So 90 inches divided by 12 equals 7.5 feet. 7.5 feet for the first run, 10.8 for the second run, and 2.5 stairs, 2.5 times 20 equals 50 divided by 12 equals 4.1 feet. That's how we do the math for that. Just helps me out when I'm sewing. So this carpet is 10 feet long. We're gonna double check that in a minute. I've already cut two strips of 10. So that pretty much will almost do that. And then we have our two templates for our stairs. So I got out the old tutorial staircase just to check my angles. This is a 28 inch runner and I had to go to a 30 inch runner. I just wanted to check that angle. See where that line comes out? From that end to that end is 35 and that is the proper, 35 inches and that's the proper angle. So I just wanted to double check. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uh, been on this job.
so everything's sewn, everything's in the truck. I've just got to organize the tools a little bit, but sometimes, you know, makes it, I make it look fast on video, but I have been here since about nine o'clock. That took me two hours to prep. Sometimes it's not so easy. The templates sometimes are hard. If the nylon thread gets too hot on the needle or the needle gets too hot going through this really thick carpet, that pops and then we gotta feed it back in through the needle. That stuff just takes time. So I'm going to grab a coffee, grab something to eat on the way and then the job is about 45 minutes away from here. I'll see you guys on the job. We'll show you, walk you through. Uh, it's a very nice staircase, nice people. So we'll see you when we see you. All right, so here we are on the job, as promised. So here we're gonna measure, make sure that our under pad is even on the, uh, from rail to rail. Now we're setting up our carpet and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold this, there's a piece of cord around from the ceramic to the stair. I decided that I would line up this on top of that cord around because I really don't like the look of it when it rolls over on the ceramics. That's a nice clean look that we have going on there. We're gonna fold it form it underneath the nose. Now this stuff was very strong and sturdy as it felt backing, very tough. Lots of staples, maybe a staple per inch. Get that nose nice. Now we're measuring again, checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Give that a stretch, double check it because you wanna make sure that the first one is set up. Usually if the first one is set up, the rest will be fine as well. You always want to check, but number one, super important. Sets the stage, baby. Okay, lots of staples give you guys a different angle of view. Now, because this stuff is so stiff, I did not use Smooth Edge. Believe it or not, Smooth Edge will make that rip. So I, what I do is I score it, and I put lots of staples in there until it starts to form. Now I only started not using Smooth Edge a few years ago when I just realized with this kind of carpet it was a better fit. It worked better, it sat better. A lot of times when you have the felt on the back, it doesn't hook to the Smooth Edge anyways. So this has just seemed to turn out a lot better. I like the method better. People are not feeling the Smooth Edge on their feet, which they're appreciating. So it's worked out very well for us. So here we're coming up to the first pie. Right, now remember that is a straight stair, but does have an angle cut on it. Now that cut, I believe, we just talked about it at the store, at the shop, was 35 inches on the angle for the first turn. So then the pie, the second pie stair that I made, it starts off at 35 inches on the bottom. So we're cutting the ends with the scissors. Look, we're gonna measure here. What does it say? 35. There we go. So 35 to 35, I'm gonna make that work. That's the toughest turn to, to do. This one, to you gotta get this one right. And that's why I have that tutorial staircase back at the store to check my angles. Nothing worse than getting to the job and then realize that your angles are wrong and you've gotta drive back to the store an hour or so, let's say it's 30 minutes away, you gotta drive 30 minutes to, to go do it, you gotta spend 30 minutes cutting another stair, and then 30 minutes back, you waste an hour and a half, right? It's frustrating. So, it'd be nice if we had a traveling uh, sewing machine, but I don't. I have a stationary one at the store. I think the traveling one is about three grand. And I have thought about getting that traveling one.
Okay, so we're just checking, checking the angle, making sure everything's good underneath. Give you guys a little Christmas view there. This is a very big stair. So like I always do, we cut from the left to the middle and from the outside. We always cut from the outside in and then try to use the scissors on the outside because if you don't have a sharp blade, it will tear the, uh, the uh, binding and you don't want to cut into the wood on the outside. It will show. So we've got our angle here. I think this one was 35 and a half. And then the stair has is 30 inches back to the normal size runner because we're doing a 30 inch runner here. So we got our angle really good here. This one turned out really nice too. Just smoothing out the staple marks. You know, like I always do, I wiggle the tip of the staple gun inside the carpet and that helps with the marks as well but then you know you give them a little rub maybe a top with a hammer whatever you don't want to see stable marks it looks sloppy all right we're finishing up on the angle and we're back to our normal stairs usually this is where I get very excited I'm like yay I've made it thank goodness I get a little stressed on that stuff People pay good money to get this done and you want them to do, you know, a perfect job for them. So I take my job very seriously and I would always like to have, you know, the best result. So I do get a little stressed out and when I get past those angles, I'm like, gravy. Because straight stairs, this is easy. Anybody can do this stuff. As long as you got a tape measure and a couple of tools, you're good. Now a lot of times when we have to join those things, you can see it's a little it's a little hairy. We gotta cut them up with scissors, we gotta clean them up, we have to put a little glue in there. That's where we're joining the angle, the last angle stair to the straight stairs again. Get the measure up, get the staples in the side. Keep a lot of pressure on that, that kicker and then super score with the tucker. Lots of staples, and then we'll super score it again. Every stair is the same. You should be doing the same method on every stair, right? We're pre-bending, let's get that bend in there. Otherwise your staples are gonna pop out when you try to put that in. Lots of pressure on that kicker. If you're not gonna use smooth edge, you've gotta keep pressure on that kicker till you lock that in place. All right now, when I do it, I lock the sides in place first so that I don't usually have to use the kicker on this part. And then because the under pad is there, we've got maybe a quarter inch gap on the pad. And then when we push down, that tightens it up as well. See, we lock it down on the side. And now we score it. And if you want, you can use the kicker here to tighten it up. Seems to be this stuff is pretty tight and pretty solid, so I didn't have to do it. Did go through a hell of a lot of staples, though. Now, this carpet is by Shaw. It's Anderson Tough Tex out of California. It's beautiful stuff. Okay, so we're getting to our first end here. So we can't go all the way up to the riser because we have to get a finished piece. So we have to cut that off, score it really good, get a good knife in there from the left. And then we finish from the right. We're gonna measure down here. See, I'm going under that nosing, not above it. I think it was five and a half. So we're going to cut that with the scissors so we do not fray it. So we measure five and a half on that side. I flip it around, we're going to measure five and a half on this side. And we're going to scissor cut it. Now we're going to cut it. And now you can see there's a little angle there. Let's see if I can, yeah, you can see that there's an eighth of an inch angle. 
That's so the outside fits down over around down onto the other piece to make it look seamless. So we push it down so it goes underneath that trim or molding. A lot of, lot, I've seen at some other jobs that people go over that molding. I do not like that look because it bubbles out. It doesn't look good. It looks better there. And remember, they're not doing the landing. Now here we go up to the next, the last 2.5 stairs. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go above that piece of cord around. Flip our little tabs in, staple there. Keep it nice and clean, fold under that nose. We're gonna have to give that a score because we see those staples. The camera gets it better than, than, than I did. You have to get under there and have a look at it. Same thing, same method, score, score, score. This stuff was tough. Very durable stuff, but Anderson Tough Tex by Shaw is amazing carpet. If I did stairs every day, I would only want to use Anderson Tough Tex just because it's amazing stuff. I should probably get a sponsorship from Anderson Tough Tex. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. We're on the last stair. We've got to cut it from the left. We'll cut it from the right or vice versa. Get that out of there. Clean that up. Bang those staple marks in. Get that all nice and flat there. And then we're going to finish that there. Guys, remember to like, subscribe. Any questions, leave a comment. And if there's a video you'd like to see, let me know.
All right, so we just, uh, I just finished the job. I'm just leaving the place. I thought it would be around two o'clock. I guess we did all right. It's only 1.34. This is Keith Shannon, and I'm out of here. See ya.